Welcome once again to Crusty Bread at St. Mary's Episcopal Church, Chester. This is our midweek opportunity to focus on the word and see how it interacts in our lives. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you know that we have no power in ourselves to help ourselves. Keep us both outwardly in our bodies and inwardly in our souls, that we may be defended from all adversities which may happen to the body and from all evil thoughts which may assault and hurt the soul. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Our reading comes from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 6, 1 to 13. He left that place and came to his hometown, and his disciples followed him. He began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astounded. They said, where did this man get all this? What is this wisdom that has been given to him? What deeds of power are being done in his hands? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, and brother of James, and Joseph, and Judas, and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense. Then Jesus said to them, Prophets are not without honor except in their hometown, and among their own kin, and in their own home. And he could do no deed of power there, except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and cured them. And he was amazed at their unbelief. Then he went about among the villages teaching. He called the 12 and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He ordered them to take nothing for their journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not to put on two tunics. He said to them, wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave the place if any place will not welcome you and they refuse to hear you, as you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and proclaimed that all should repent. They cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. The Gospel of the Lord. This is, ooh, that's a lot in that one passage there. I wasn't really sure whether I should read it all, but then sometimes, you know, you, you never know where the Spirit is going to lead you. And this passage really always brings to mind the concept of familiarity breeding con contempt. And when we say that, we mean that people who believe themselves to, to know who you are, um, actually begin to dislike you. As opposed to liking you more, they actually like you less. And there have actually been studies surrounding this. And so it's a concept that really holds true, particularly when people begin to believe that you, what they thought was, what they thought they knew about you wasn't at all who you were, or the person that they knew from however many years ago, and you're growing up in your, you know, in your hometown and, and, and uh, with, with the kids on the block, and you know, the person that you were, that they knew, they realized that you are not like them anymore. You somehow have changed, but they want to hold on to the old you. And as long as you remain the old you, then you're all right. You're cool with, with they're, they're cool with that. You know, they, because they want to do things that perhaps you just don't do anymore. And, and not only that, but you are thinking differently about everything about your your life, your ministry, the things that hold your attention, the things that you uh, that entertain you. You think more spiritually about how you can be of service to other people as opposed to 
um, you know, whatever it is that, however you used to get your joys out of life, you just, you don't do those things anymore. And so they begin to dislike you because they realize that you've been called to something different and they're not ready for what that difference is and what it, what it would mean for them. You've already decided that you're going to follow this, 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 this path of life. You're going to follow this journey and they're simply not ready for the journey. It's not so much that they don't want to. It's just that most times they're not ready. And uh, I can remember uh, at one point in time in, in when I was in college and I had a roommate and I was really, um, I mean, I was laying on the gospel and stuff really heavy. I don't know how or why I ended up, um, you know, I was, I was going to this sort of evangelical um, service and I was really just just feeling the spirit and you know when you first come into understanding of who God is you, the first thing you want to do is you want to tell everybody you want everybody to join and have this sort of spiritual awakening with you so I'm I was really laying it on thick and and my friend was was just she just wasn't having it and so eventually I realized she didn't she didn't she didn't want to hear anything I had to say so about a year later, we were still friends. Um, it didn't keep us from being friends or even roommates, but about a year later, she had a different roommate and I had a different roommate. And, and uh, she came to me one day and she said, you know, she started talking about God and, and, and all this kind of stuff and, and how God was doing this and, and laying on a little bit of scripture on me as well. And and I said, you know, just over a year ago when we were roommates, I was trying to tell you the same thing as I told you the same thing. And, and she said to me, yeah, I remember, but I just wasn't ready. I wasn't trying to hear all that. And so, you know, you know by the end of that semester, we decided we weren't going to be roommates, probably because she didn't want to hear what I had to say. But ultimately... Uh, what I had done was laid a seed, and she remembered, and the, her next roommate ended up, I guess, saying it in a different way, or maybe not laying it on so heavy and so thick, but she did ultimately uh, begin to change the person that, uh, you know, changed some things about her and, and really began listening to God and listening to the Word, and I was really happy about that. A, a, a tad bit for perplexed, but I was really happy that she had, you know, come to know God and was wanting to know God even more. So here we have Jesus coming into his hometown and you think, you know, they're all happy for him. You know, they've heard of some of the things that he has done. And so now he's here at the town, except that they're thinking that he's going to hang out with them and he's going to do the things that they keep doing, you know, and um, and it turns out he, he's, he's not that person. He's actually never been that person, but they associated him with his, his mother and his sisters and brothers, and they're, you know, just going along with the system the, the way they are. And, and Jesus is, is, preaching, is preaching something new. You know, he's preaching this repentance. He's picked up where John the Baptist has left off, and he's moving forward on his way to Jerusalem. And, and they're just, they're not ready and that ready. And, you know, I really think that Jesus had his feelings hurt. I know when my, my first feeling, when my friend was telling me how she had turned her life to Christ, <laughs> and, and I felt, I did feel a little bit hurt because I was like, I was trying to get you to do that as if I had to, you know, mark something off on my, you know, on my attempts at, you know, converting people, but that's, that's not how it works. You know, people come into this, to this life and this ministry, you know, one seed at a time, and perhaps you're the one seed and we just have to, to take that, but we do have to speak the, speak the truth and continue to speak the truth. And then perhaps, you know, at some point in time, they do come to Christ. And this is what Jesus tells his disciples. He says, Hey, 
let's we're on our on the move we can't be worried about people thinking they know who we are we still have to spread the word and so he sends them out to do just that and he says if they don't accept you you know just dust your feet uh wipe your feet wipe the dust off your feet and keep rolling because there's there the word is not going to stop because they did not listen to you, but you have to just move on. And um, you have that testimony, so I was there, and they can't say that you never said anything. You know, my friend, she admitted that she, that I had spoken with her, um, but she wasn't ready. She wasn't ready. And so you're gonna come up to, you know, you as we travel in this journey, we meet a lot of people who knew us when, and, and and now that we are, you know, not really trying to, to do anything anymore, we're just trying to do what God has called us to do, and that is to speak the truth in love and to, to let people know that they don't have to, um, you know, really concern themselves with the, the bogged down with so many things in life. But uh, those are the things that we have to, to deal with anyway, but we have, we have a God who really cares about who we are, and we don't have to take this journey alone. There are other people out there that are going to take the journey with us, and God is the, you know, the main person, and Jesus Christ is our, is our, um, is the one that we look to for these same examples, because he has walked it, he has felt the same pain of people rejecting us, but it never stops him. And so my message for you tonight is don't let the rejection stop you. Keep moving on. Wipe the dust off your feet and keep moving on. God has a place for you. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, amen. Go in peace. Remember, don't focus on the crust of life outside. Focus on the fluffy crumb inside.